Hi everybody, it's still February 19, 2018. I'm going to start this video by playing a video. We're going to rebuild our depleted military, avoid needless foreign wars, build new friendships overseas, and remember those three famous words, peace through strength. Okay, so what he actually said was... Um, war is peace. War is peace. Peace through strength. The American way. Peace through destroying countries with bombs. Peace through killing innocent civilians with drone strikes. Peace through not caring at all about the innocent civilians in the countries that we want to invade and occupy and take over. That has been the American way. Manifest Destiny did not stop at California. It just continued across the world. Ending the needless wars. It, it's stunning, but Trump is the guy to get the job done, right? In one year, he has outdone Obama. In eight years, he has escalated these wars. He hasn't ended the needless wars. He is doing exactly what the board members of U.S. Inc. want him to do. Escalation of the wars without a care for the innocent civilians. He is as crazy, evil, psychopathic as all the rest. Sorry, Trump supporters. You really do need to take a step back and look at this guy, because what you are doing is the same old, same old, expecting different results. So yes, we all have to work out our own insanity. We grew up in a culture of lies. We grew up in the country of lies. We grew up in a country that is based on lies. So the idea that we've got values, that we are morally superior, is a lie. And if we don't do the work necessary to become sane ourselves, then we are absolutely complicit with all of the psychopaths that we put on pedestals thinking that they're going to save the day. We remain children expecting daddy to fix the problems. But what do Americans focus on? They focus on these the, the gossip and sex scandals and these tweets. Trump tweet storm. Yes, challenges Oprah to election duel. This is your quote unquote leader. The reality star king is having a duel with America's daytime TV queen. This is what we have become. And it's, it is demoralizing. It's disgusting. It's repulsive. But it gives the American people what they want. Give me all of this crap so I don't have to focus on what's really important. We have a, we have a Supreme Court justice who came out and said she's going to be pushing due process in the wake of Me Too. A hashtag. Me too. Sex scandals. Give me the sex scandals. Give me the gossip. Give me all of this crap so I can remain with my ass in the air and my head buried in the sand. I don't have to take a look at myself. I don't have to face myself. I don't have to face what my country is doing in my name. And you can't separate out. I'm sorry. This idea that when I get comments from people who say, it's not me, it's not us who are, who's doing this. There's, there's a disconnection between what ordinary Americans do and what our government does. How you, you really do need to think about that because we are all a part of this nightmare and Yes, Americans, they have a connection to their own government. 
You want to get caught up in all of the crap, all of the gossip, all of this, you know, nonsense. You want to get caught up in, in all of the bullshit that mainstream media is putting out. You want to get caught up in your own belief that this guy is going to save the day. Then you do remain a child because he's not saving any day. He is absolutely the guy that was put into the White House to achieve the board member's agenda to take over the world. And it really, uh, uh, at this time, at this point, I I'm sorry, good, unsub me, fine. Write your comments. You don't want to hear what I have to say. Good, fine. I, what can I tell you? This will never, ever, ever, nothing will ever, ever, ever change unless the individuals in this country change and we have a change of individuals in the aggregate that can band together to manifest something real, manifest something based on truth, and manifest some health in this country. But yes, there are an awful lot of awake people who are, unfortunately, kind of still doing the same old, same old, expecting different results. And that is the definition of insanity. What this guy has shown you ever since he got into office is exactly what Obama showed us ever since he got into office. It's no different. The, you know, I, I get comments from people who say, well, you know, he's, he got us out of the Paris Agreement. It doesn't matter. 392 mayors and governors, um, many governors are implementing the climate change plan. But you don't hear him coming out talking about those mayors who are in, implementing it. Uh, why is it mainstream media all over hammering into Americans' minds, into Trump supporters' minds, the escalation of all of these wars? Why is it mainstream media saying he has not ended those needless wars? And I'm talking about hammering it home. Yeah, they've reported on it. But what they hammer is the crap into everybody's minds. So mainstream media, they're supposed to be hating Trump. If they wanted to really go after Trump, they would be hammering home what he is doing all over the world. Now, of course, he's the puppet. He's the one that speaks to Americans, and they believe that he's actually in control. No, it's the board members of U.S. Inc. in control, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers. They tell him what to do, and he does it. No different than any other puppet, puppet that we had before. Um, why don't we listen to this? We went after Iraq. They did not knock down the World Trade Center, okay? It wasn't the Iraqis that knocked down the World Trade Center. We went after Iraq. We decimated the country. Iran said, you know, okay. But it wasn't the Iraqis. You will find out who really knocked down the World Trade Center because they have papers in there that are very secret. You may find it's the Saudis, okay? Okay. You may find it's the Saudis. Now, our U.S. government has admitted that the Saudis are the number one funding country, government of terrorism. But they're still our ally. The Saudis, how they treat their civilians. Despicable. They are truly the evil dictators. But they're our friends. They are the ones that are our ally. How can it be possible that Americans can't see through? How is it possible that they literally will not take in that we have forever propped up dictators who submit to what we want them to do and those dictators that don't submit we take them out? Easy. Clear in our face. No, 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 no. They're going to buy the lies of 
oh, we're so morally superior and we're so great and we've got to take some humanitarian efforts to bomb countries, kill innocent civilians because, well, peace is strength. Right? <laughs> and it has nothing to do with humanitarian efforts. It has everything to do with invading and occupying, conquering territory, stealing resources, has nothing to do with saving those civilians from their evil dictators. So, Saudi Arabia. Trump said, hey, we may find out that it was Saudi that took down those buildings and killed over 3,000 people, but let's just sell them some weapons. Let's sell them 110 billion worth of weapons and 350 billion over 10 years so they can continue to fund those terrorist organizations that we created, trained, fund, supply. No, Americans don't want to hear that. They just want to hear all of the crap put out by their really twisted, psychopathic, quote-unquote, leaders. And you can get angry at me all you want, but I can't stand this. You know, the PNAC, the, the project for the new American century. All right. What, for those who don't know about the project for the new American century, it was a Washington-based think tank created in 1997, and they created this white paper. It was a white paper um, desiring and demanding only one thing, the establishment of a global American empire. And what I'm going to show you is that Trump is no different. He is bringing about this global American empire. So the essence of this ideology um, produced, it, it was found in this white paper, it was produced in September 2000, Rebuilding America's Defense Strategy, Forces and Resources for a New Century. It outlines the requirements to create the global empire. The U.S. must reposition permanently based forces in Southern Europe, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East, and that's what we have done. We've got bases. We've got 11 bases in Syria. We've got bases in Iraq. We've got bases in Afghanistan. We've got bases. No doubt we're building them in Yemen, Iraq. We just go in, we invaded, we occupied, and then we began to build the largest military base. And I think it's, uh, what was the estimate? If I can recall correctly, it's the size of four football fields. We're there permanently. Many Americans think the Iraq war is over. Are you kidding me? We're still fighting. We still have thousands of troops in Iraq. Trump increased by close to 4,000 troops in Afghanistan, but modernize U.S. forces. That's exactly what Trump is doing. Develop and deploy a global missile defense system and develop a strategic dominance of space, control the international commons of cyberspace, and increase defense spending. All of our presidents have been following this outline. But the PNAC document describes four core missions for the American military. Two central requirements, fight and decisively win multiple simultaneous major theater wars. And that's exactly what we have been doing ever since 9-11. We are in so many countries fighting and decisively winning because peace through strength means that we bring to those countries our military might. No, we cannot win based on our ideas and values and moral superiority. We base, we win based on how many bombs we drop. And the other requirement is to reshape those regions for our own security. And that's what has been done and continues to be done. So who created this PNAC? Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, Richard Pearl, Paul Wolfowitz, 
and Bruce Jackson, a Pentagon official who worked under the Reagan administration or for the Reagan administration. Um, and you can read more about it. And if you don't see how these wars were needless wars, if you don't see the wars that Trump has has engaged in and escalated as part of this agenda, I don't know what to tell you. But none of these wars are just wars, that's for sure. But the rebuilding America's defenses, it is the institutionalized plan and ideology of these crazy sick people, Cheney, Wolfowitz, Rumsfeld, Elliot Abrams, Jeb Bush, uh, the special envoys that we put in not only to Afghanistan but other Middle East countries, William Crystal, uh, co-founder of Weekly Standard, co-founder of the group, the PNAC group, and Rob, uh, Rupert Murdoch, who I've heard that Trump speaks to, like every Sunday or something, speaks to him all the time, great friends with Rupert Murdoch, who also owns Fox News. Um, so I will link below to everything, but everything, everything that Trump is doing is, well, he gets a lot of support from Dick Cheney. Now, Rex Tillerson, how did he get into the Trump administration? It was Dick Cheney. Great friends with Dick Cheney. So, Trump appoints him to be Secretary of State. And he's also getting support from Donald Rumsfeld. Trump, we are better off today than if we had Hillary. Are we, the ordinary Americans, better off? No. Dick Cheney and Dumbs, Donald Rumsfeld and this PNAC group are better off. Now, I will say that it's no different. If Hillary was in, they, Hillary, would be following what the board members want Hillary to do, just like Trump is. The Bureau of Investigative Journalism, as well as Air wars. These are independent groups that have tried their best to investigate the wars. And, well, Trump supporters, you're supporting a guy that's murdering an awful lot of innocent civilians. I'm not going to read much of this. What you care about, it is absolutely true that people demonstrate their care. And if you care about what is taking place today, then you will be doing an awful lot of research to find out what is going on. Trump supporters, it is not okay to just simply say, well, he's getting rid of regulations. He's doing what he said. Do you know what regulations he's getting rid of? Because some regulations you don't want that guy to get rid of. Like those regulations that restrain the EPA from allowing us to be dosed with more and more chemicals. But that's what he's doing. Um, the escalation of war, just in these two documents, you will see that the, these countries have been truly just laid to waste. <laughs> the fighting in Iraq, Mosul, grew bloodier in 2017. The non-combatant deaths um, have risen 200%. And 65% of all civilian deaths tracking from 2014 
65 percent of all civilian deaths occurred under Trump. It's an unprecedented death toll. So this is what's happening in Iraq and Syria. January 1st to December 31st, 2017. Coalition. We've got a coalition. I, I, America, I don't even know if... Yeah, Trump brought more countries into the coalition. And the coalition is the United States, the UK, France, Belgium, and Australia. And possibly Jordan and Saudi Arabia. Cumulatively, this coalition dropped 39,577 bombs and missiles in airstrikes against ISIS in 2017. ISIS is just a, 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 a renaming of Al-Qaeda. Hillary Clinton tells us that we created Al-Qaeda, which we did, and then they just, well, we need a new name, ISIS, and they unleash ISIS, and then we fight this proxy army. It is a United States proxy army. The, the reason for this is we have to have some terrorist organization to fight. So we create them to take over these countries. It's clear, it's plain, it's in our face. And the amount of innocent civilians that have to suffer the consequences of this is phenomenal. Of these strikes, 3,348, 29% were in Iraq, 8,225, 71% in Syria. Trump announced that, <laughs> that we defeated ISIS. We defeated ISIS. So, do we leave Syria? No. We've got to remain in Syria to make sure that ISIS doesn't return. And Americans can't see through that line. We're there permanently. That's the idea. A 215% rise in, un, in, in likely civilian fatalities and a 55% increase in injuries under Trump. The deadliest years, year for Iraqis and Syrians. This is the guy that you support. Syrian strikes outnumbered those in Iraq by nearly three times in 2017. Civilian deaths in Syria rose by 335%. You can read the details. But this is what has been going on while we have focused on Russia. <laughs> yes, the Russia collusion. So it details civilian deaths from the coalition bombing. The coalition bombing. See, we we have to create these coalitions so nobody it, it, it's easy for all of these countries to not take any responsibility for any of these deaths because you got so many countries in there so who did it well number one country US US we're killing so many children we're bombing schools and hospitals no different. And the Bureau of Investigative Journalism goes into how many we are killing in Somalia. The, the, the strikes under Trump have tripled in Yemen. This is the escalation of war. The strikes in Somalia since 2007. Do, 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 do. Oh, 
you get to 2017. Boom. 2016. Somalia. Yep, we got to take over Somalia. We have to create these terrorist organizations, and we give them different names. So in Somalia, it's Al Shabab. Shabab. Yeah, they're the terrorist organization that we're fighting in Africa. My God, Americans are children. They just want to hear what they can stand to hear. They're children that just want to play. Let mommy and daddy do everything. Trump administration effectively sidestepped the restrictions by declaring parts of Somalia and Yemen to be areas of active hostilities. Yemen, 30 strikes hit within a month of this declaration being reported, which was Trump unleashing our military, delegating to our military. You don't have to come to the White House anymore to talk about who you want to bomb. Go ahead and do it. 30 strikes. In August, President Trump announced his South Asia strategy, deepening Americans' commitment in Afghanistan. He's sending, what, 4,000 troops over to Afghanistan? I thought, I thought we were going to be ending those needless wars. Afghanistan is like the longest war we have ever had. But Americans don't even want to ask, what the hell are we doing in Afghanistan? We know that we got into Iraq and destroyed that country and murdered their civilians based on lies. We're still there murdering innocent civilians. And Americans, they don't want to ask, what are we doing in these countries? Trump announces we defeated ISIS and they don't question. He's saying we've got to stay there permanently. Yes, it is hard to take. Transparency, gone. October 2017. No crucial information about war in Afghanistan comes out. Air operations in Afghanistan intensified. Indications of civilian casualties are on the up. But we're not to get any of that information anymore. Trump, he spoke announcing the new Afghan strategy. And it prompted further speculation that drones would return to the skies of Pakistan. We can no longer be silent about Pakistan's safe haven for terrorist organizations. So he started drone strikes again in Pakistan, Somalia. AFRICOM will not say how many ground operations it has carried out in Somalia, but some details have emerged. One operation ended with a U.S. fatality. Oh my God, an American died. Ten civilians killed in that operation. Killed by American troops. Yemen. More U.S. strikes hit Yemen this year than the past four years combined. Most of the 125 strikes in 2017 hit central Yemen, where the U.S. military central command pursues these horrible terrorists that we created. You can read about all of our raids and all of the innocent people that we are killing. But it's all about taking over the world. And he's the guy they put in charge to really unleash our psychopathic military to kill and he doesn't give a shit. So please, you cannot support people who have absolutely no conscience and who clearly are all about themselves. Themselves. 
you know, I, <laughs> I'm just going to show you. I got Trump. I've got Trump wars. Trump wars. And before I found these documents, or these two organizations that have compiled the escalation of war, bombings, civilian deaths under Trump, I was going for individual articles. Um, you can stop the video and read, read all of these. These articles show you that Trump is no different than any other psychopathic president that we have had. No different at all. And I've got more. Trump belongs to the club. Trump's administration obstructs justice in Goldman Sachs cases. Cheney emerges, emerges as surprise, Trump surrogate. It's not a surprise. Only four countries left with a Rothschild central back. I think it's down to three. Syria, North Korea, Iran. Uh, Turkish forces hit Kurds with toxic gas after crossing into Syria. It's the, the, the escalation of war. Many of these articles are very recent within the last couple of days. Assad is still using chemical weapons in Syria, although Mattis has come out and said that Assad did not use chemical weapons. And then he had to come out and say, well, he uses chlorine. He doesn't use serum. All of it lies. Uh, Syria war, Assad's government accuses U.S. of massacre. Well, we do massacre people all over the world. U.S. forces reportedly killed more than 100 Russian Mercenaries, Putin has been rather quiet and came out, I believe, and said that the U.S. didn't kill Russian military, they killed Russian civilians. You can, you can, I'll leave a link to this Syrian war for dummies. Three versions, three versions of how we stick our head in the sand. Falsehoods and lies inciting war is a war crime. 53 admitted false flag attacks. Trump's 700 billion foreign aid program. The Dutch foreign minister admits lying about Putin comments. Everything is lies. We're saturated in lies. Everything. How can you believe anything? Because you've got to find those organizations who are independent. 90% of all deaths in war are civilians. Americans, in our name, since World War II, our military has killed over 20 million civilians around the world. So, you want to support Trump, then you support this. You want to pull yourself completely out of the matrix Resolve your own insanity of doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. You want to remain silent, never scream about the evil that has been unleashed in our country, all over the world. You want to never take a look at what really is happening. You make yourself complicit with the evil. It's, I, I honestly, I have heard videos of people who have posted for a while, they recently posting videos just one was what the New World Order does to us. Jane Tan Tandy, I think. She crying and speaking from the heart.
and others writing to me about what has taken place in their own life. They suffering the consequences of this evil that's taking place. It's all because Americans can't face their own lies and therefore accept, easily accept the collective lies. We've been doing this for so long. And it's unfortunate that we do, it's clear, we have way too many people who just will never do anything to change themselves. That is the only way to change the world, is for you to change. And that's another thing that an awful lot of people don't want to hear. They don't want to hear it. Uh-uh. I'm not going to do anything different. Doing nothing different allows these people, the evil psychopaths, to do whatever the hell they want.